My name is Shannon. I'm a wife, a mom, and a Shay Shay. I'm a speaker, an author, and a recording artist. But most importantly, I am a child of God. Every day, I seek to live out my faith with truth and transparency. But most days, I just need grace in high heels. Hello and welcome to this edition of Grace in High Heels. I'm your host, Shannon Perry, and we have a special show planned just for you today. We'll be hearing from Scott Horde on the controversial topic that is sweeping our country and our expert trainer, John Prather, here to show us a quick tip for looking good. But first, the cute shoe feature of the day. Cute little go-go boots that you can wear with big bell bottoms or you can wear it with a short skirt. As my mama always said, false eyelashes and cute shoes make everything better. And speaking of cute, thanks to all of you who send us pictures of your pets doing the cutest thing. Today's picture comes from Vicki of her dog, Archie, who loves to shop at Lowe's. Look at him just hanging out in the paint aisle. <laughs> He's beautiful. Hey, thanks Vicki for sharing Archie with us and happy shopping. Send us your pet having their cutest moment and they could be a star right here on Grace in High Heels. Speaking of Grace, we get to hear from a member of our Grace and Guts Girls Book Club. Grace and Guts is my latest book that teaches how to throw the knockout punch to the 12 areas women say they struggle with the most. Today's question comes from Cameron. Hi Shannon, I'm a really busy college student, so my question comes from Chapter 1 of Grace and Guts. What are some things I can do that will help me when I feel exhausted? Hey Cameron, thanks for your question and thanks for taking time out of your busy college life to send in your video. So Cameron, one of the most important things we can do is begin our day with prayer. When we're already tired and feeling overwhelmed, sometimes we don't think we can add one more thing to our day. But this is the most important thing we'll do all day because we need for God to help us avoid the pitfalls that make us feel exhausted in the first place. Psalm 72, 12 says, He will deliver the needy who cry out. And when we're exhausted, we're at our neediest point. We need rest, we need focus, and we need for Him to do what only He can do. I suggest a lot more ways for overcoming exhaustion in chapter 1 because He doesn't want us to live frazzled and worn out. Hey Cameron, thanks again for your question. And if you're struggling with exhaustion today, Pick up a copy of Grace and Guts wherever books are sold and throw the knockout punch by putting God's Word into your situation. Hey, if you'd like to climb in the ring and join the Grace and Guts Girls Book Club, it's free. Log on to shannonperry.com and send us your thoughts and you could be in the next video we share. Women are warriors. We fight for our families, our friends, and our faith but we're often hesitant to enter the ring when it comes to caring for ourselves. Our opponent comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But we've already been promised that we'll win the round when we find the guts to enter the ring and the grace to endure the fight. Since 1973, it's estimated that 55 million babies have been aborted. While this is a tender topic and viewer discretion is advised, we know that truth is what sets us free. 
As a pastor and the founder of Operation Saving Life, Scott Horde joins us today to talk about the ways we can all make a difference and save lives. Scott, we're so glad you're here. Thank you so much for Great being here. Great to be here. here, Shannon. Thank you. This is such a tender topic, but one it that is. definitely needs to, a conversation that needs to be had. So tell us why you became interested in saving the unborn. Uh, about four years ago, I was sitting in a Starbucks in Smyrna, Tennessee, and I was just dealing with the uh, frustration of everything that we see in our culture, the darkness that's there. I began to pray to the Lord, and uh, I gave him my anger that day. I said, Lord, I'll give you my anger. I'll give you my frustration. Would you give me something in return? And he gave me two words. He put two words upon my heart, and it was engage abortion. And so I didn't know where abortions were happening. I didn't know if it was in Nashville or Franklin or Brentwood or Smyrna. So I Googled the topic. I found two locations and I drove down, not really sure what to do. I sat there and began to pray. I had to get out of my car. There was a testy situation yeah. on the street in front of it. I had to uh, get out and defend a person. And uh, when I left there that day, my hands were shaking. I was like, Lord, is this what you want me to do? And he said, Yes, so that began the journey. Wow, what a high calling. And I bet when you pulled up, like you said, not knowing what to do, because you and your team are on the front lines out there where right. these ladies are literally contemplating having an abortion. Tell us what happens once you get there and what do you do? Do you talk to the ladies? Are they open to, to hearing what you have to say? How, how does that it's, look? It's interesting. It's a very, Shannon, it can be a very dangerous place. And I realized that standing there alone a lot of times that um, my wife would get threatened. Uh, we've had guns pulled on us. We've had people try to run over us, spit on us, tase us, maze us, you name it. But we still go and we go in love. And we realize that there's a lot of shame associated with abortion. We don't go there to condemn, but we go there in love and in truth hoping that women will respond, and they have. And so far today, we've had 170 babies rescued. Wow, uh, my, just chills on my arm. That That's great? just amazing. Yeah. That two words, God spoke to you. Right. And look at all the lives that you have helped save since that. that. Well, once you have talked them out of having the abortion, right. you do some very practical things to help these ladies afterwards. Tell us about that. Uh, we take a comprehensive approach to life. Shannon, and what that means is do we care about the baby? Yes, but do we care about the welfare of the mom and the family? Right. We do, and so our commitment to them is to meet all of their needs, their immediate needs and even beyond. And so there's um, one lady that we're walking with today, we've been walking with her for two years. For instance, uh, her boss was forcing her to abort. She, mm -hmm. He got her pregnant, mm -hmm. she lost her job. So we've paid her mortgage, we've paid wow. her light bill. Uh, we've helped with childcare. We've helped with food. Uh, there's women that go in that have to have jobs. They don't have transportation to get there. I think we've purchased probably four cars. Uh, our 170th saved. It just happened last week. Um, that family didn't have food. They were behind on rent. Uh, their car was breaking down. Their children, their 13 year old son, was embarrassed to go to school because his clothes didn't fit. And so just within the last week, we have met every one of their needs. And as a matter of fact, Yesterday, we pulled them out of that gang infested environment and we have them in a safe place right now. So we're trying to find them a permanent residency, find him a new occupation, put the kids in new schools mm -hmm. so that they can live so she can have her fourth child. Wow, what yeah. an incredible picture of love. Well, Scott, we know this is a controversial topic, it is. both in the church and out of the church, right. but also in the church. Yes. So I'm gonna ask you this tough question. Give it to us straight. Oh, come on. As Christians, mm -hmm. do we have the right to be anything other than pro-life? No. There's right. never an instance where abortion is right because Psalm 139 tells us that God forms that child in the womb, that he intricately weaves it together. A lot of people say, well, what about in the case of rape? You got to ask, what is rape? Mm -hmm. Rape is the forcing of one's will upon another person. Mm -hmm. That's what rape is. Well, what is abortion? It's the forcing of one's will upon another person. Um, I know children that are a product of that mm. and that are living today that are beautiful. And mm. their mom said, you know what? What happened to me was wrong, but my child doesn't deserve that. And I'm going to give them a chance. From a medical perspective, it's very rare. People often say, well, 
what if the mom's life is at risk? And, and they use that as the instance that abortion should be okay. It's extremely rare. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you an ex uh, uh, example. There was a lady, I was at the abortion mill this week on Tuesday, and a lady stopped in the middle of the road in traffic, and she just started shouting, this place here told me this about my son, told me this about my second son, told me this about my third son, and that I should abort all three of them, labeled them with diseases, um, and all three of them were healthy boys, and she said, I didn't kill any of them. Wow. And she said, this is an awful place. <laughs> wow. That happened right in the middle of the street this week. But look at the testimony. Yeah, there's what God can of do. Them. Like you said, it's it's just what God can do. Right. And that's what these women don't know, that there is a God that we serve that is so powerful. And yes. he's able to override anything that medical doctors say. He's able to do whatever he wants to do. And he's able to take those little babies and he's able to give them such an incredible life like you're describing. Yes. So Scott, there may be someone watching today. Right who says, you know, I, I really, I hear what you're saying, and but you don't just, you just don't understand my right. situation. I hear it all the time. You don't know what I'm going through. You right. don't know the, the shame that I'm gonna have to face. If I, if I do have this child, my parents are gonna kick me out of the house. Right. And there's all kinds of things that could be happening. So what would you say to those viewers who are watching today? Maybe they're saying that, or maybe there's somebody watching who says, I'm actually the one guilty of trying to talk somebody into having right. this abortion. Would you talk to the viewers? Yeah, so me? if you're um, considering having an abortion today, you're right, I don't understand your circumstances, but God does. And he, uh, you, what you see in front of you is a mountain that it, it looks immovable, but there is a God a God whose authority and a power and love is un immeasurable that can move that mountain. And if you turn to him, he will remove that mountain and, uh, and he will guide you and walk with you all the way through this. And, and the first day when you hold that child, mm -hmm. you will just be in wonder and awe and just be shocked that you ever even considered killing the child. I've held probably over 30 babies that, um, that we turned away from the abortion mill. When you hold that child, it is mm -hmm. unbelievable. Out of the 170 moms that have changed their mind, not a one of them has regretted it, mm -hmm. not a one. What an incredible difference you are making in Operation Saving Lives. And I know our viewers are gonna wanna support this because I, I, I just think that this is an incredible opportunity to partner with you. They may not be able to go out on the front lines and stand there and do what you're doing, but they can support you financially and they can pray for you. That's right. So if we want to learn more about Operation Saving Lives or if we want to give to your ministry, tell us how to do that. Well, we have a website, operationsavinglife.org. Uh, you can go there and you can see a lot of different ways to get involved. And you're right. We it, It's bigger than me. It's bigger than our little church. It's going to take the big church to pull this off because 170 women are a lot and and what we invest just in one family is thousands of dollars we have 170 rescues today tomorrow i will be out there again maybe we have 171 172 and we have to be ready to meet their needs and if you jump on board with us um, you can help us meet those needs and at the same time help us end abortion because abortion it needs to go away Operation Saving Life, you can support this ministry and I encourage you to support this ministry. And wow, what an incredible opportunity to hear these stories. God bless you. Oh, thank thank you. you so thank much you. for all that you're doing in the lives of these ladies and these little ones. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you. Thank you. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your Lord, you never have to take another negative word from another person inside of your heart about yourself because if it can't be backed up in here, it's not the truth. Tonight I had a great time listening to Shannon and it was beneficial as a mom of little ones just knowing that sometimes when we get lost in the chaos of being a mom that there's a purpose for our life. She came walking in that bathroom. She said, what is the matter with you? I said, I am hung in the toilet paper roll holder. 
Shannon is the woman that you want to come and speak to your ladies because she's funny, she's full of life, she loves Jesus, and it comes through so clearly. Well, actor, model, and personal coach John Prather is here to take us through a workout that he says is sure to help us change the way we look and the way we feel. Hi, John. Hello. Good hello. Have you again. Thank you. Happy to be here. So, what are we going to be working on today? And we're going to work on some shoulders and a little bit of arms today. Arms. Again, a little bit of arms. A little right? bit of arms. <laughs> Just checking. All, All right. right. Go ahead. So I brought a couple of basic pieces of equipment for us. So we're going to start out with a little dumbbell. Okay. All right. So we're going to do a shoulder press. But we're going to start again from the ground up. So your feet are about shoulder width apart. So we got a good solid foundation here. Your core is tight. Your abs are pulled in. Okay. You're nice and tall through the torso. Then you're going to take the dumbbell. You're going to bring it to about ear level here. And you're just going to press it straight up above your head. All right, so you're just going to go up, bring it down to again about your ear, and then press it straight up again. So you just want to make sure that your elbow doesn't come out in front of you here or back behind you here. You just want to kind of keep it on the same plane. So if you're kind of standing between two walls, you want to be able to press this dumbbell up between the two walls just like that right there. Okay. All right? Just like that. Just like just that. Just like that. And one time it will look just like that. <laughs> here we go, yeah. Your general, general uh, rule is you want to exhale on the hard part of the motion. So when you're pressing gotcha. it up, you want your body to kind of fall into a natural breathing motion where you're, when you're pressing the weight, you're exhaling. Very nice, good. Perfect, and then make sure you get the same number on the other side. So we're not lopsided. You're That's not you lopsided, you, you don't want that. Right. Yeah. Very nice, good. Keep that elbow right underneath okay. the dumbbell. So, ball. yep, right. yep. You don't want that dumbbell to kind of float out in front of you. You want to keep it right beside your body. Yeah, perfect, there you go. Good, and that's great for the shoulders and for your triceps there. So let's move right into a tricep motion. Okay. So we'll use the same dumbbell. You're going to keep your elbow up by your ear here. So this is going to work the back of your arm right here. Gotcha. So we'll move into the arm. So you're going to press the dumbbell up right above your head. Bring it back down. So don't hit yourself in the head. Yeah. So bring it up, okay. extend your arm, kind of flex the back of your arm right there, and then let it back down right behind your head, just like that right there. Gotcha. All right. Okay. There we go. Let's do a couple of those. Ooh, okay. All right, elbow go up. Here. There you go, perfect. Go behind my head. Yep. Like Very nice. Like that. And straight back. And then back extend up. it straight up. Straight yep, up. there you go. Okay. Right there. Beautiful, perfect. This looks great. Make sure you kind of flex that tricep at the top. Flex. Good. There you go. Very nice. How's that? Good. Yeah, I can feel it tighten up there. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Let's do the I other can feel side. It too. All right. Let's get a couple reps here. There you go. Keep that elbow because that elbow will want to kind of float out away from your body as your arm Straight gets tired. Gotcha. So you want to keep your elbow up by your ear. Oh, okay. There you go. Yep. Yep. Your body will kind of make it, want to make oh, yeah, it a little easier. Yep. Your body will want to make it easier. As it gets more tired, it'll naturally try and make things easier for you. So it'll float kind of away from you there. There you go. Good. That looks great. All right. Let's trade the dumbbell. We'll use a band next here. Oh, these so. Are fun. That one's for you. I'll take this one. And where do we get these? So you can get these anywhere. They're pretty easy to pick up. They have them at most, uh, you know, Walmart, Target. You can get them at Amazon, almost anywhere. Okay. And they're, you know, a bunch of different brands of them, but they're all about the same. Okay. So they're pretty inexpensive too. And you can use them for travel. You can put them in your bag. Right. They're super easy to take around, so you don't have to get off your routine. You can take them anywhere with one you. One of the things they're... I've noticed, the things that you use, we can take those anywhere we go. So Absolutely. So we really kind of lose our excuse of working out. Don't Absolutely. We? Yeah. It's easy to get off track when you travel or when your schedule is different. You maybe work longer hours or something but it's really no excuse when you have something like this you can just put yeah. in your bag or you can leave in your car and you can do a few minutes every day and it's so easy all right so, so we're not off the hook anymore. so you're not off the hook okay. anymore gotcha. so let's put it under both feet make sure it's kind of in the middle of your feet there okay. and make sure the band resistance is about even on both sides Don't want to let go. yeah so let's start out with a set of curls here so your elbows are going to be tucked right into your sides there you go your palms are going to face up the whole time okay. so you have that nice tall posture that we have there you go and then you're just going to curl up just like that right there Good, yep. And so you can either do alternating, like you're doing there, and then if that feels uh, too easy and you feel up for it, you can do them both at the same time so that both arms are working at the same time. So you keep your palms up and just leave your elbows. There you go, very nice. You'll leave your elbows tucked right into your sides like that. Perfect. Yeah, boy, you can very feel that nice. in the top part of your arm, can't you? Yes. Woo! Now let's move back into the shoulder so you okay. can keep the band in the same position there. Okay. I'll move away from you just a little bit because we're going to do a side raise. So this will oh. be to give you kind of that definition between your shoulder and your arm. Okay. So all you're going to do, you grab the band in the same position and you're going to leave your arm straight and move it straight out to the side like that right there. Okay. So the important thing on this one, there you go, very nice. Wow. The important can thing on this one that? is to leave your arm straight. So you don't want to try and bend your arm. 
You want to keep your torso tall and strong, and you're just trying to take your hands out away from you, just like that. Good. Make sure you keep breathing. Nice. So this is the Very same nice. kind of breathing, right? Yes. So on the hard part where you're pushing it up, that's where you want to kind of exhale. And you don't have to worry about your breathing too much. Your body will generally yeah. fall into a natural yes. rhythm of it. So don't get too focused on it. The most important thing on these is you want to keep it under control and you want to keep your arms straight. Right. So you want to be able to leave your arms straight here. If you can, you want to take it all the way up so that you're kind of right. making a T with your body here. But if you can't take it all the way up, it's more important to leave your arms straight and maybe go right here than it would be to try and bend your arm and get your arm up higher. Okay. So to keep the exercise correct, you want to try and take your hand almost out away from you, like okay. this right here. So instead of trying to think, I'm trying to take it high, you're trying to take Straight it out away up. from you. Yep, and gotcha. that'll, leave, that'll make your arms long. Okay. And that'll Ooh, give you that yeah, kind you of shoulder arm development. That looks great. You did great. That was perfect. Thank so you. little, the sh full shoulders and arms we just yeah. did there, right okay. there. Okay. Well, that was that was not bad at all. Yeah. I love these. Yeah, they're super versatile. You can use them for a lot of things, especially a lot of exercises for your upper body. So great. they're great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about something else. Okay. Let's talk about consistency. Yes, that's what I was just gonna say because I know how I'm feeling right now, and I feel really good. Uh huh. And I'm thinking, you know what? I'm done. Like yeah. I feel great, but. I, but if I don't feel like doing it tomorrow? The most important thing that you can do is just be consistent with it. And do it when you feel like it, when you don't feel like it. it. The most important thing at first is not to worry about the results. In the beginning, the process is the result. All you're trying to do is teach yourself the process. So don't set a, a really large goal where you're trying to lose a lot of weight or you're trying to work out six days a week and you're trying to be in the gym for a couple of hours or you're trying to go on really long runs. Break it down. Just say, okay, I'm gonna work out for 15 minutes. For 20 minutes, I'm gonna do it three times a week. And so if you just start with that and build your way up to something more, being consistent with that will make a bigger difference over time than trying to set a really large goal that you try and make in a, a week or two. And it's a mental thing a lot of times. It really is. Because we just have to make ourselves do it. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's, you know, you can surround yourself with people who also kind of know about your goals or who like to accomplish the same type of goals and that helps out a lot because if you're, let's say you go to the gym or if you're doing this at home, you can do it with your spouse or, you know, you can do it with your kids or whatever. But if you have someone else who's expecting you to do it, you're meeting them, it's much easier to do it if you have a friend who's like, okay, well, let's. Well, you let's, have a trainer. Who's oh, you have a trainer. You That's the best of all worlds, absolutely. <laughs> In my opinion. Well, I had the best trainer, obviously. Okay. So be sure to connect with John and check out all he has going on, including his new book, The Nephilim Virus, at johntprather.com. Yeah, it's absolutely great work. You know, just like it's crucial that we take care of our bodies because it's our temple, it's crucial that we take care of our spirit too. So here's today's quick clip of grace from the road just for you. I want to get a lesson on balance. And so here's what I did. I rented me a Barbie video. How many of you know that the Barbie's got it all going on? Amen? She's got the perfectly balanced life. I want to share with you what I found in that Barbie video. Barbie's alarm clock goes off playing. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I have a glorious feeling everything's going my way. As she bounds out of bed, her hair is fresh and her makeup is beautiful. She glides into the kitchen where her husband and children are waiting perfectly dressed. And they say, oh, Mommy, here's a rose that's almost as beautiful as you. Her husband reminds her that he'll give her the credit card and wishes her for a best wishes of a day of shopping because he knows how tiring it can be taking four naps in one day. He says, may I cook dinner tonight? Anybody live in that house? <laughs> Me neither. How many of you know as women, the first thing we tend to do is we tend to compare our lives with other women. Can I get a witness on that? Yeah, that's what we do. Well, I compared my life to Barbie's life, and you know what? My life looked nothing like Barbie's life. Matter of fact, my alarm clock never even went off. My son was beating on my shoulder saying, Mom, Mom, get up. We're going to get another tardy slip. I threw back the covers. The dog went flying projectile across the room. I got up, and I put my clothes on that I had on from the day before. My ponytail's hanging off on the side of my head. And we began the relentless hunt for the... 
Yes, y'all are smart here. The keys, which were hidden in the pizza box from the little, you know, pizza from the night before. But we ran out to the car, and we jumped into the car, and we were driving down the road. And all of a sudden, I noticed I had a friend behind me. He likes red, white, and blue. I pulled over. He walked up to the door, and he said, excuse me, ma'am. He said, I noticed that you're in a little bit of a hurry. He said, is there a problem? And I said, no, I'm just trying to get my kid to school. And he said, well, he said, your inspection sticker is expired too. Please step out of the car. That was my day, but here's what I've learned. Life has a way of catching up with all of us, and it's caught up with Barbie lately. Take a look. topic goody two shoes because I believe that many of us as women feel like we have to be Barbie or a goody two shoes no matter what season of life we're in and we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as women to be that perfect person whatever season we're in I want to tell you tonight and I want to reassure you tonight that is not what God has intended for your life if you're here I saw a sign the other day that said do you feel like raggedy Ann living in a Barbie doll world isn't that good Sometimes I feel like that, don't you? Trying to get it all together. This world has tried to place all kinds of pressures on us. They've tried to tell us we have to wear our hair a certain way, weigh a certain thing, look a certain way, live in this certain house, work this certain job, have our kids in these certain activities. If we want to be the right kind of woman, but that's not what God says. I want to reassure you tonight, I'm going to give you some scripture to back that up. Jesus says in John 14, 27, my peace I leave with you. But what I have found that when I begin to focus on those things that the world says are important, before I focus on the things that God says are important, I don't have peace. And neither do the people around me. Right? So there is a way that I have found that we can balance all of these things in our lives. Now, I know you have kids and you have grandkids and you have jobs and you have cars to take care of and bills to pay. We have all these things to take care of. And there are a lot of books out there, and I would encourage you to buy them if they're Christian-based, that talk about balance and how we can find balance in our life as women. But tonight, I want to focus on one book with one man that had the perfectly balanced life. That book was the Bible, is the Bible, and his name is Jesus. Jesus had the perfectly balanced life. When he was on this earth, he had the perfectly balanced life. Now, how did he do it? He didn't have an iPhone, iPad, I anything. How did he do it? I'd write this down if I were you. I'd take notes. Here's what it is. He knew his purpose, and he never lost his focus. If your group is hosting an upcoming retreat, conference, or event for your ladies, drop me an email or give our office a call at the number you see on the screen because I would love to be your speaker and meet you in person. You can learn more about all the topics I offer for events when you visit shannonperry.com. Hey, thanks for tuning in to today's show. And until next time, know you're loved and keep walking in God's grace. To purchase a copy of Shannon's teaching materials, including her latest book, Grace and Guts, visit shannonperry.com. Grace and High Heels TV is made possible by the friends and partners of Shannon Perry Ministries. Your tax-deductible donation is an investment into eternity, and together we will reach viewers with the life-changing truth of God's Word. To give, visit shannonperry.com. And thank you for your prayerful and generous support.